Well, my friends are gone and my hair is gray. I ache in the places where I used to play and I'm crazy for love, but I'm not coming home. I'm, I'm Catherine Mayer, Time Europe editor, and I interviewed Sir Tom Jones at Somerset House ahead of his Olympics concert. I said to Hank Tom Jones, thanks very much for talking to Time. The last time I interviewed you was back in the 1990s. I'm really hoping my career lasts long enough to interview you again in 15 years. Me too. I hope I last long enough to interview you again in 15 years. Can you tell me to what you attribute your great career longevity? Well, uh, good health, first of all. You can't, you can't do anything without that. So I'm lucky there. And my voice is still as powerful as ever. So that's, there's luck there as well. And uh, the love of it. I'm always finding uh, out new things. When I try uh, different projects, you know, there's always something to learn. I don't, I don't think we ever should stop learning. Maybe there ain't no heaven, no Tell me about when you first met Elvis. I met Elvis Presley in 1965, when I first went to America. 1965 was a, was a huge year for me. My first hit record was a song called It's Not Unusual. It's not unusual to go out at any time. And that came out in January of 65, and it, it became a hit you know, worldwide. So I was meeting all these very famous people very quickly. And um, Elvis Presley was, you know, was one of those people. I, m I met him in, uh, in Los Angeles. I was knocked out, you know, they said Elvis is, on, is filming in Paramount and he, he heard that you were here and he'd like to say hi, you know. It was great meeting him and, and, and him knowing who I was. You actually became friends with Elvis and with Frank Sinatra, didn't you? Tell me something that I wouldn't know about Elvis. Tell me something I wouldn't know about Frank. Um, well, I, I don't think there is anything that you wouldn't know. I mean, the biggest difference I saw between Elvis Presley and Frank Sinatra, Frank used to like to drink, you know, and so do I. So we had that in common. You know, we would be at the bar in Caesar's Palace and we would have a few drinks together and, uh, you know, to me, he was a very warm person. You know, and, and a lot of people have said about Frank Sinatra, oh, you know, he could be, he could be a little awkward. But then again, who, who is he being awkward with? You know, I think we can all be awkward on times. It all depends who, we, who we're speaking to, you know, and who we're dealing with. And, and, and Elvis Presley did not drink. The, the common denominator, if you like, uh, is, is music. You performed at the Diamond Jubilee concert recently. I'm guessing you've met the Queen a few times over the years. Well, uh, I know you've met her at least once because you're Sir Tom Jones. Uh, well, I, f I first met her in 1967, when, it, when the show that used to be, used to be called the, the Royal Command Performance. And then I got an OBE, Order of the British Empire. And then, of course, you know, a few years later, they said you've been uh, considered for a knighthood. Wow. That was... Uh, that shook me up there for a, for a while, to be honest with you. It made me shake a bit. So it didn't make you nervous being around a small woman with a very large sword? No, I had confidence in her that she wouldn't. <laughs> she was still, all of, you know, all the faculties were in place. She wasn't going to slip or anything. But I'm, I must say, I, I always feel very proud in her presence. She's, she's a fantastic person. She caught me off guard once, I remember. I was doing one Royal Grand performance and she said, are you still living in America? And I said, yes, but only for convenience sake, Your Majesty. I mean, it's like it's shot out. <laughs> if you had to choose just a few tracks to be your Olympic soundtrack to represent Britain, can you think of a few that you might come up with? Um, well, I mean, during the war, Vera Lynn was the big singer, so it would have to be something. And there was a fellow called George Formby, who used to play, uh, you know, leaning on the lamppost at the corner of the street, you know, which was a big part of uh, British music in those, those days. The Beatles, of course. Beatles, not the Rolling Stones? Um, both. I think you can have both, because they, they're different from one another anyway. Would you have any punks? 
Uh, no, punk, well, you know, you've got to have something from each era, I suppose, you know, to represent Britain. Mm -hmm. So it should be represented. I think it all should be from different eras. But there's a lot of people, so I'm, I'm glad I don't have to make the choice. Of course, the Olympics isn't just about sport. It's also supposed to be about legacy. I think it's great for any country to host the Olympic Games because it's a wonderful thing. Um, like music, sport is something that brings people together. And I was in Los Angeles in 1984, so um, they were expecting, you know, oh, we have to make sure the roads are right and the traffic's going to be murder and this and the other. And when it came, it, it, it happened very orderly. So I hope it, it happens like that uh, in, in England. It's hard to imagine you ever stopping. Immortality would be a wonderful thing for me. You know, I, I, I'm enjoying myself so much that I never want it to end. And um, the thing that will stop me will be eventually age. Because singing to me is not work. Singing is a, is a pleasure. And um, if everybody could, could have that, something that, you know, the passion that people have about things, if they could, if they could turn that into a career, I think that's that's the that's the gift of life then. Yeah.